Hi, this is your host, Apni Bhartia, and welcome to another episode of TFR Newsroom. And today we have with us Kim Lewandowski, co founder and chief product officer at ChainGuard. Kim, it's great to have you on the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah, and uh, you folks uh, announced the availability of new S bomb uh, vulnerability analysis and software signing capability in Enforce. Before we talk about Enforce, ChainGuard, uh, since we have covered ChainGuard in past, so our audience, they do know about the company, but uh, let's just, you know, do a quick recap. What is ChainGuard all about in today's modern cloud-centric cloud-driven world? Yeah, so ChainGuard is almost two years old now. Um, it's a software supply chain security company, uh, which means we're trying to help companies gain more confidence in the software they're running in their production systems. Um, so we help them understand what they're running, what the security posture is, how to take remediation uh, tasks to make their things more secure and then give them tools for um, con continuous compliance to make sure that they're not outside of compliance for the things that they've set internally. As you're like talking with the company, and if you look at today's world, once again, it's not just the cloud and the cloud centric, Kubernetes centric, it's also software driven and mostly it's open source. Uh, so talk also a bit about the importance of whole software supply chain, not just from the perspective of what's going in your pipeline, just like automotive industry, you know, you need to know what's on the assembly line. Uh, and then we can also talk about the whole S-bomb two or three years ago, even Biden administration, they came up with the executive order to enforce. So talk about some of the changes that you're seeing are happening in this space when it comes to, you know, the whole, you know, software supply chain. Yeah, great question. Um, I think the whole topic in general has just kind of taken off over the last few years. So it is it is a bit of a buzzword now. So we see a lot of software supply chain things in the news and other companies and, and vendors in the space. Uh, but the response from the, the U.S. government has been kind of incredible. Like, I guess this is my um, closest kind of interaction with at least watching things uh, on the, at the federal level. But the amount of uh, work that's been put in, putting into helping, you know, providing frameworks for companies to follow to new regulations um, that are coming down the path has kind of been really, really exciting to see. Uh, and then as your point about open source software, there's a lot of risk in, in using open source software. So we're seeing tremendous strides in like the open source community for uh, folks trying to do the right thing and trying to uh, make their things more secure and, and make it easier for downstream consumers of the open source software to have more confidence in what they're pulling. Yeah, and let's talk about the role that Chain Guardian is playing in making things easier. And then we can also talk about Enforce here. Uh, so, wow, <laughs> where do we start? Uh, I think the way that I like to, to frame this is the, the customer journey is really around what I mentioned before is kind of knowing what you're running in your production systems, where where the software came from, it still seems to be a bit of a black box for a lot of organizations. Um, you know, developers are still building things on their laptops, is, our, is what we like to say a lot, you know, under their desktops and, and not knowing, um, you know, what dependencies are going into that. And then it's being shipped out into production <laughs> and folks aren't even aware that it's sitting in there running and there could be a new vulnerability that creeps up. So. You know, unless you're scanning things continuously in your production environments, it's just hard to have that complete picture of what's going on. So I think that's part of the problem that we're trying to tackle is just more awareness about what's what's running where and, and what its uh, security posture is. And then the next step is, you know, making changes, um, fixing some of those problems. So we do have one product I'm not sure if we talked about on this show before called ChainGuard Images, which we've gone all the way down to the Linux distro. And so we call it our Linux undistribution. Uh, it's, just, it, we, it's, its name is Wolfie, and so we um, we are building everything like from source. We are controlling all the packages that go into this undistribution. It's got it's baked in all these um, software security uh, 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 features. So making like reproducible builds. We're signing everything. We produce S bombs for it, and so that's one way to kind of shift really far left and give give developers kind of a strong, secure footing to start with through uh, through secure base images and even application images. So so we're helping on the, the remediation piece uh, and, and for some of the enforced features we'll get to in a minute. But then the next step is that if you if you sort of made all these changes as a company, like how do you ensure that you're you're staying in compliance with those? How are you how are you ensuring that you're still in compliant with those federal mandates that are coming down? So that's the part where um, Enforce, our control plane, 
kind of comes into practice and lets you define those security controls at an organizational level and then make sure you're always in compliance. So I like to frame things as like, know what you're running, fix what's wrong, and then enforce to make sure you don't kind of go backwards in time and and uh, don't reap the benefits that you put into <laughs> fixing things. And since we're talking also about uh, some uh, news announcements, so talk a bit about uh, some new features that you folks added to Chain Guard Enforce. Yeah, so I'm I'm really excited about these features that were that are coming out this week. So Chain Guard Enforce is our um, our risk management platform, so almost our security control plane, if you will, for your cloud native environments. Uh, and so we. You know, by by enabling Enforce in your environments, we connect to AWS, GCP, anywhere like you have containers running. Uh, and then the the features that we are announcing this week, the first one is called um, just S bombs, like as a service, basically. So so these mandates now, like federal contractors, all have to produce S bombs. I think by the end of the year, I don't know, don't quote me on that. And so kind of inherit to chain guards DNA is we're trying to do security the easy way or let you do it the right way and basically do things by default, if you will. So, so developers don't really have to think about a lot of things. So um, anyway, so the SBOM feature is we connect to your workloads. We try to see if you already have an SBOM. Um, if you don't have an SBOM attached to the containers that you're running, we're going to go ahead and produce one for you. So you don't even have to lift a finger. So we will, we will generate all the SBOMs and then, that gives us valuable insights into the dependencies running in your environments. And from there, we can then start doing interesting things with like vulnerabilities. So that's um, kind of the next piece of what we're uh, announcing this week. Is similar to the auto SBOM generation is we're doing auto uh, vulnerability scan generation. And so if you're not already scanning things in your environment, um, we will again, try to see if there's a scan available. And if there is, we'll ingest that data and then use it later on. Or if there's not, we will automatically um, produce a vulnerability scan for things that you're running. And then the vulnerability scan is cool because of, like I mentioned before, it's we are continually running that scan like every, I think, 24 hours in production right now. So a lot of times we see companies that will kind of run a scan once before something hits production. But then that's it. And so they're not continuously scanning kind of what's going on in the environment. And so that's one added kind of feature that we're putting into the platform. And so a lot of it is just to make things easier on people. Uh, you know, we, we've we seen SBOMs coming down. So just, yeah, again, just trying to do that the easy way and, and do it automatically for you. So Enforced Signing is um, built on just the concept of signing kind of code and signing different things so you can ensure that it hasn't been tampered with like when you're consuming it. And so enforced signing is our um, feature on top of the platform, which lets you sign uh, on behalf of like your private uh, company and we're using it internally. So you can sign like a container image, for example, you can sign it out of the build system. So then the consumer of that image could then go back, verify the signature and then you can trust that that image hasn't been tampered with from the time you pulled it to the time that you start using it. Um, so we use this internally. We've also baked it into the product. Um, we were also using it for um, uh, for Git commits. And so how do you know the developer is the one that really you know wrote the commit? And so we use it for Git commits where we uh, sign against our own trust through. All chain guard developers have to sign our commits, and then we verify that signature before we pull the code in. So it's um, you know the signing piece is just a huge part of the software supply chain challenges in general. So we're really excited to build on um, some of our knowledge with the Sig Store and CoSign project and the open source, uh, where companies need their own kind of private version of that system, and that's what we're here building in. And, and launching. <laughs> How much awareness you're seeing of S bombs is there? So when you like, of course, you, you folks two or three years old, uh, that when we look at this challenge, you're like, hey, you know what? We have moved to advanced phase where everybody knows about it. Uh, education is not a challenge. The challenge is their workload, how to help them where they are in the journey. Or you're like, we are still at early phase where you still have to tell folks you do need these practices in place. Yeah, I think that's, that's a great question. I think it's still pretty early days where we're seeing with the S bomb thing. It's, it's, you know, it's, there's a whole community around a lot of discussions around it, but um, folks kind of seeing it as more of a checkbox right now, uh, cause there's a lot of open questions 
uh, and, and some skepticism and SBOMs in general uh, when they're, when they're um, uh, created, for example, uh, whether it's at like build time where you know exactly what's going into the software, which is what we do for our chain guard images, as opposed to like trying to create the SBOM after the fact. So a lot of discussion, a lot of healthy conversations happening within the community. But I think it's still pretty early days where folks are with their general kind of understanding and, and where they see the value of making these things more useful. What kind of challenges organizations mostly run into when it comes to embracing, you know, some of these S bombs? And also there are different, not a standards necessarily, but there are different projects, PDX is there. And then, you know, a couple of other projects are there when it does come to helping, you know, either through open source. And then of course, there are a lot of proprietary. Talk about some of the challenges that developers or teams or DevOps, DevSecOps, they face when they do try to embrace, where you're seeing a patterns and you're like, hey, this is what where chain guard is going to help them to lower the barrier of entry for them. Yeah, so I think, you know, some of the challenges that you pointed to is just there's a, a bit of a format game going on right now. There's a few different formats. And so I think picking a format would probably be the first step in the process. And then, uh, I mean, another challenge is just security in general. So uh, there's always this kind of push and tug around security teams wanting to do the secure thing and then developer teams wanting to move fast. So uh, I think anytime security teams try to I mean, not advertently try to introduce new friction into developer flows or like, hey, now we got to produce an SBOM, you're naturally going to see like, hey, this is going to slow us down. Uh, so, you know, that's why we're building a lot of tooling and things around it to, to abstract that away and make things like easy um, for developers and organizations. Um, I think other challenges are, I think some of the skepticism around, like I was pointing, I was, I was saying before is like, what, what, what are they getting out of those SBOMs? What's the real utility? Tooling is still very early days. Uh, how do we, you know, how do we make sure that we're using, what do we do when a company gives us an SBOM? <laughs> so if another vendor kind of gives them an SBOM, like, what do you do with that data? Like, how do you make it useful for you? So I think there's just a lot of open questions now that we're kind of figuring out as we go. Can you also talk about or give us a glimpse? What are the things that you folks are working on? What are next for Tango this year? Oh, wow. Um, we got a lot of things <laughs> in the pipeline. So, you know, one of the pieces, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> pun intended, uh, one of the pieces to build on, like, the enforce features is, is, again, making remediation even easier. So, like, what do you do when you have that data? What do you do when you see um, critical vulnerabilities that we you know, that have been scanned or you have an SBOM that, that shows that you're depending on something with critical vulnerabilities? So making it really easy to address those concerns. Um, I think, you know, the chain guard, the enforced signing piece has, has a lot of interesting use cases. Like I said, companies are trying uh, to kind of stand some of this stuff up internally to, uh, to have better confidence in, in the, in the code, even first party code that they're producing. Um, but then I think on the, on the near term horizon, we've got a lot of interesting, com a lot of interesting things coming with our chain guard images, uh, product, which we didn't touch on much today, but, uh, we have customers asking for different kind of uh, bundled kind of features. So I have this particular stack that we're running and uh, the vulnerabilities are just causing us a ton of pain. Like, can you just kind of provide that bundle for us so we just don't have to think about these things anymore and, and we can use you as the throat to choke is the, <laughs> the, the, the terminology that, that people use. So um, a lot of interesting things coming on uh, Chain Guard Enforce. Uh, FIPS is a big thing for customers. And again, just a lot of the regulatory compliance. Uh, oh, that's what I was going to say about the Enforce signing thing is the government has mandates around self-attestations. And so I can't, I can never keep these things straight, but it's basically saying you have to attest uh, to certain things or else you could be liable. And so this is a big place where the enforced signing thing can come in and help and help companies along. Kim, thank you so much for taking time out today. And of course, talk, talk about chain guard and also uh, as bombs in general, software supply in general. Thanks for all those insights. And I would love to chat with you again. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks for having me.